Hey everyone, Victor is here and in this video I want to talk about the stork enamine synthesis which is a useful workaround when a classic enol or enolate chemistry may not be a viable option. So first of all, what exactly is the stork enamine synthesis? Well, we are going to start by taking a carbonyl, typically an aldehyde or a ketone, and converting it into a corresponding enamine. I do have a dedicated video on the enamine formation, so if you need a refresher you can check it out. Now, coming back to our enamine here, there is something really cool about this species. Enamines are inherently nucleophilic. Because the electron pair on the nitrogen that we have over here can participate in resonance with our double bond, we are going to have a significant delta minus on the carbon, making that carbon relatively nucleophilic. Which means that if I react it with some sort of electrophile, I can potentially create a new carbon-carbon bond. And we know that one of the huge goals of organic synthesis in general is carbon-carbon bond formation along with other things like uh, functional group transformations and such. Now, you might be wondering why bother with the enamine synthesis if we can seemingly easily accomplish all of that with just a simple chemistry of enols and enolates. Well, there are a few reasons why we would bother with that. And first, from the synthetic perspective and from the utility and application of the enamine synthesis, the enamines are stable species, so we can prepare them beforehand and store for the future use. So if you do a lot of the similar synthesis where the starting material is the same, you might just prepare a lot of your enamine and use it whenever you need to. But that's a minor thing. Another huge thing, especially when it comes to chemistry of aldehydes for instance, is that aldehydes are difficult to analyze in basic conditions. So one thing that we can do with aldehydes, we can convert them into the corresponding nucleophiles by by turning them into corresponding enamines rather than trying to analyze it, because analyzing an aldehyde is next to impossible. Likewise, if we are trying to do reaction with aldehydes in acidic conditions, well, aldehydes are extremely electrophilic, so you're going to have a hard time controlling that reaction. But using the enamines, will allow us to control the reaction the way we want the reaction to happen. So let me give you an example here to explain how all of that works. Let's look at this sequence over here. My first step is going to be the enamine formation, so I'm going to start by drawing my molecules and I will show that the first step in this reaction is going to be attack from the nitrogen onto my carbonyl like so, giving me the corresponding intermediate. Now, from this point we are going to have quite a few proton transfers, three proton transfers to be more exact, giving me the following intermediate, and then from here I'm going to have water acting as my leaving group, so water is going to pop off, the nitrogen is going to help, giving me the following aminium intermediate, and this aminium intermediate is not particularly stable, so I'm going to bring another equivalent of my diethyl amine, deprotonate this position like so, and that's going to give me my enamine as the final product of this step. I know that I kind of ran through this mechanism very quickly, but as I've mentioned, I do have a dedicated video on this mechanism, so if you want to dive a little bit deeper and uh, refresh uh, this mechanism in your memory, you can go there and the link is in the description below, of course. Now, once we have our enamine, we remember that enamine is a good nucleophile. So next, I'm going to proceed with my alkylation reaction here. So I'm going to take my enamine I mean, and I will show my alkyl halide next to it, and we are going to see the uh, nucleophilic attack here, where the electrons originate from our nucleophile onto our electrophile, which is the alkyl halide, kicking the leaving group out, and as a result of this nucleophilic attack, we are going to form the following aminium ion, and the new bond that I have just formed here is right over here. Now, from this point, we are going to uh, go on with our hydrolysis, so I'm going to bring my water, and this water is going to do the nucleophilic attack on this aminium ion like this, giving me the following intermediate. And I'm running out of space, so... 
let's shrink my things down a little bit much better. Now, from this point, we are going to have another couple of proton transfers converting my nitrogen containing moiety into a living group. And then from here, we are going to get rid of that nitrogen containing part. So I will show the electrons on the oxygen that will help my nitrogen to pop off like that, giving me the following intermediate, which is obviously the protonated aldehyde. So I'm going to bring water in and I will deprotonate that carbonyl like so, giving me my final product looking like this, where the new group that I have added to my molecule is right over here. And so the new bond that I have created is this one. So I'm going to show that this is my new bond there. And as I've mentioned before, if you were to try to do this reaction in basic conditions via simple inhalation, well, best of luck with that. Aldehydes are so electrophilic that even if you try to do the reaction in the presence of something completely non-nucleophilic like, I don't know, LDA, the aldehyde will still do the uh, nucleophilic attack with the LDA at the carbonyl rather than analyze. Aldehydes are incredibly difficult to analyze. Not impossible, but difficult. And the stork in amine synthesis in this case is an excellent workaround. Now, let me show you a different example. Let's say I wanted to perform this mixed aldol reaction. We know if we try to perform reaction like that, aldehyde here is going to be playing a role of the electrophile, while the ketone is going to be analyzed into our nucleophile and essentially going to be playing the role of our nucleophile. But what if I wanted to do it the other way around? What if I wanted my aldehyde to be a nucleophile in this reaction? If I don't have any tricks up my sleeve, well, I'm out of luck. There is nothing I can do here. However, if I do this reaction not as a regular mixed aldol reaction, but rather I try to do it via the stork in amine synthesis by adding a secondary amine and then adding the acidic workup at the end, then I'm going to have something interesting happening here. Since aldehyde is significantly more electrophilic than ketone, that guy is going to react with my amine first, giving me the following enamine. Now, that enamine is a nucleophile, while my carbonyl, my uh, ketone here, is going to be the electrophile. So in this case, I will have the enamine attacking my carbonyl like so, giving me the following intermediate, which after the uh, acidic uh, workup, so I will show my water over here, water going to protonate my O minus, like so, giving me the following intermediate. And then from here, we are going to continue with our hydrolysis, eventually giving us the final product looking like this. And while the stork in amine synthesis might not be the best alternative for the mixed aldol reactions, it generally doesn't give very good yields anyways, if I try to do this reaction directly, I would fail completely. So I guess better to have some yield instead of no yield whatsoever. And I have seen reactions like that in the literature, so that makes me believe that if you know what you're doing, it is possible to accomplish it anyways. But these two reactions that I have just showed you here, these are just the tip of the iceberg. There are many more other variations of the stork in amine synthesis. So let's say, for the simplicity's sake, I will say that I will start with the cyclohexanone as my example molecule, and I will convert it into the corresponding enamine. Now, from this point, I can do the alkylation adding the uh, group to the alpha position. I can do the reaction with the aldehyde or a ketone, making the corresponding aldol, which I can then convert into an alpha beta unsaturated compound via the elimination. I can react my enamine with the acid halide doing a Kleisen style reaction, making a 1,3 dicarbonyl. And where the reaction truly shines is where we do the Michael addition style reaction, because regular enolates, unless they are stabilized by two carbonyls, they are not very effective Michael donors. However, the enamines, they are 
excellent Michael Donners, so if I want to do the Michael addition with a regular carbonyl, this is an excellent workaround that does perform well and gives good yields. And even that is not the complete scope of the store kinamine synthesis. The method is extremely powerful, and probably within the scope of your course, you would want to remember these reactions, however, as I said, there are many more other examples where stork enamine synthesis really shines. So, what do you think about the stork enamine synthesis? Have you ever heard of this sequence before? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, you can tell me about that by hitting the like button and leaving me a comment. Check out this video next, and I will see you next time.